So I joined this Facebook group and I've been getting or seeing a lot of questions about where to start when you're new to witchcraft. Like how do you get into practicing? Um, so my advice that I had given was to start with one area that you're really interested in and focus on that one area. Um, get your your knowledge to the level where you can start practicing that one area and just practice that until you feel comfortable learning something new. So in this episode, we are actually going to talk about the types of witches. Now there are many, many types of witches out there. Most witches actually practice more than one of these types. However, this is a great way to start your practice if you're new to witchcraft. Each witch type has their own dedicated rituals and practice, and all their practices align with each other or are very similar to each other, making it easier to learn. This is why it's so great to choose a witch type when you first begin witchcraft. Plus, you can avoid being overwhelmed with trying to learn everything under the sun. Let's get into it. So the first type of witch is called the Cosmic Witch. Um, these Cosmic Witches focus on astrology, the zodiac signs, horoscopes, and celestial energy. Now I had my entire first season of this podcast all dedicated to astrology, um, as well as the zodiac signs. And so you can definitely check that first season out if you want to learn more about astrology. But I do also have some books listed on my blog. Um, they're all on Amazon and a lot of them are um, available with Kindle Unlimited. The next type of witch is the nocturnal witch. So these nocturnal witches deal with more darker energies. Um, they only perform at nighttime and usually it's at midnight. For the religious nocturnal witches, um, they might work with some more darker deities like Hecate or Nyx. Next are the sea witches, kind of like Ursula. Um, they focus more on oceans, lakes, and seas, so you might see them around like the beachy areas. Um, they do weather magic. They collect salt water, seashells, and driftwood. They perform lunar rituals. They are focused on protecting the sea creatures. They also collect crystals and perform water rituals. Our next type is the Green Witch, which is actually where I started when I first began with witchcraft. So Green Witches focus on herbalism, botany, they create oils, balms, and tinctures, they do plant magic, they use herbs and plants in magic, they do earth-based magic, they are great at grounding and gardening, and they make homemade teas. Next we have the Crystal Witch, and yes, it sounds just like the title. They collect crystals, stones, gemstones, and work with chakras. We also have the Lunar Witch. They attune to and honor the moon. They study the lunar phases, and they're more comfortable at nighttime. We also have the Forest Witch. They usually work with and around trees. They're familiar with the local plants and animals. They work with herbs. They like to forest bathe, uh, which helps them ground with the earth. They collect bones. And they also like long walks alone. Next we have the Divination Witch, which these types I am currently trying to learn. You have palmistry, tarot reading, pendulums, tea reading, runes, bone throwing, and scrying. Now these are all very different. 
Um, so if you choose this route, I would choose just one to stick with and then you can branch out later. But these are all very hard to learn. I'm not going to lie. Right now I'm learning tarot and it's a lot to remember. We also have a music witch. So music witches find magic in music. Um, they have a deep connection with sound and they use sound to enhance rituals, which if you didn't know, sound is a part of air. So it's basically air magic. Next we have the eclectic witch, which is what I am. So an eclectic witch studies many, many forms of witchcraft. Basically we dabble in everything. Um, it's the most common type of witch for advanced witchcraft. Um, we also look into folk magic as well as do ritual spell work and some of us worship deities like myself. Next comes the death witch. So death witches do spirit and ancestor work. They can do mediumship. They can aid passing spirits. And they're deeply connected with nature in the metaphysical world. Um, if you ever heard of dead work or necromancy, that's this type of witchcraft. We also have a kitchen witch. So this one is, it's different than the green witch. Because you're cooking and baking. You make homemade items. You cast home protection and cleansing spells. You do all kinds of home routines, including cleaning. Um, you hang herbs to dry them. And most of them know every spice by heart. We also have a fire witch. So just like the name says, um, these witches focus on the fire element. So they do a lot of candle magic. Um, they do scrying with the flames of the candles. Um, and they do like burning release rituals, which is something that I like to do. Um, but yeah, they focus on the fire element. We also have a glamour witch. Um, so glamour witches, they work with beauty, love, and self-love. They enjoy makeup and perfume, and a lot of times they enchant it as well. Um, they like to do bath rituals. They work with beauty deities like Aphrodite, if they're religious. Um, they love roses and pretty flowers. Um, they do some kinds, or some of them do sex magic. Um, they make do-it-yourself soaps and cosmetics. They love rose quartz. And they co connect with delicate animals. Usually on their altars, they might have a mirror. Um, they also wear talismans. And can infuse that ta talisman and enchant it. Um, they usually have a pink, red, and girly aesthetic too. We also have a fairy witch. So if you are interested in connecting with the fae, this is for you. Um, they communicate and work with fairies. They leave offerings for the fae. They might grow plants such as rosemary and thyme. They study the fae and spirit lore. They usually believe in mythological creatures. They create fairy gardens to attract the fae. They enjoy nature, especially forests and waterfalls. They study crystals. Um, they're environmentally friendly, so recycle. Um, they're skilled on approaching the fae because the fae are very tricky. Um, they're little tricksters. They respect fairy rings. They might have a dream of flying, so that's another aspect of it. And then with spell work, they always include wildflowers. Next is the storm witch. So storm witches know when a storm is coming. They might drink some chamomile tea. Um, they collect water um, from storms. So any like rainstorm, thunderstorm, lightning storm, um, each of those have significant meanings. So they'll collect water for each one of those. Um, 
They have handmade rain catchers. They hand make wind chimes. Um, they like to collect lightning wood. They ground themselves during lightning storms. And yes, this type actually does curses and hexes. And they cast their most powerful spells during thunderstorms. And they charge their tools as well in storms. We even have an ice switch. So ice switches, they collect snow water and use it in their spell work. They usually have a pet or familiar that thrives in the snow. Um, a common one are huskies. They make ice candles, and yes, that is a thing. Um, and they also drink um, peppermint tea for their tea rituals. Next is the Swamp Witch. So they usually have a scaly familiar pet. Um, they work with bones. All tools that they have are found or recycled. Um, they collect swamp water and use that in their rituals. Um, and their tools are usually rusted pots or any ritual tools that they have. You've probably heard of this one. Our next one is the Hedge Witch. Um, so they practice joy and intent in their daily rituals. They are kind of like a mix of green witchcraft and divination. Um, but on top of that, they also are great at astral projection. Because hedge witches, hence the name, they jump over the hedge. So astral projection lets them cross over into the other realms. So that's where that comes from. Um, they can also connect with spirits. They believe that all living things are sacred. They are solitary pro practitioners, so they do not belong to a coven. They only work by themselves. Um, they believe in herbal arts, such as medicinal or spiritual um, herbology. A lot of them are shamans, healers, or charmers. And usually these witches are hereditary or passed down. We also have the cottage witch, which is very similar to the kitchen witch. Um, now, they don't really focus on cooking, but they do focus on do-it-yourself projects. So everything... In this witch's life is homemade. They grow their own herbs, they grow their own food, um, they make their own clothing, they... roses are in everything so they grow roses as well. But yes, everything that they use, everything that they eat, everything that they wear is homemade. Um, they also perform home protection magic just like the kitchen witches do. Next is the Solar Witch, otherwise known as the Sun Witch. So these witches collect solar water um, or sun water to use in their rituals. Um, they like to nap under the sunbeam and that kind of grounds them. Um, they do collect crystals, but they focus more on the crystals like citrine, sunstone, and carnelian that are those bright colors resembling the sun. Um, they make sun tea, so that's... It's basically tea, but it sits out in the sun and uses the solar water. Um, they are believed to be able to draw down the sun to bring it closer to Earth. Um, they like to sunbathe. A lot of them do beekeeping as well. Um, they like to keep their windows open to really get that sunlight in. They grow sunflowers and use sunflowers in a lot of their work. Um, when doing spells, they usually do it, um, at sunrise or sunset, or really any time in the day, but they, like, really focus on those times for sunrise and sunset. Um, they sun dry all of their herbs. They also usually have sun catchers, and they usually like to stargaze, too. 
Next we have the Chaos Witch. And yes, they thrive on chaos. They thrive on energies that clash and conflict with one, each one another. Um, they do extreme ma magical practice. They love adrenaline. Um, all of their rituals are result-driven, but they do not like complicated spell work. Um, they know how to enter into an altered consciousness. Um, this can be with or without drugs. They like loud music um, that kind of disrupts the world. <laughs> they perform storm magic and they also perform hexes and curses. But pretty much they do whatever they want. And we've got a witch for everything. Um, this is the urban witch. So urban witches, they create amulets for ease of transportation. They embroider sigils on their clothing. They um, use coins for offerings. They place sigils in neighborhoods, especially protection sig sigils. They release bay leaves with wishes while driving. When they carry pepper spray, they'll put a sigil on it or a charm. They make their own perfume for bravery and courage. Um, and instead of using books to learn new things or grabbing tools, they will use apps on their phone. So they have an app for grimoires usually and an app for tarot. Um, they also listen to music to activate wards. So next is the Grey Witch. Um, so these Grey Witches perform both white and black magic. They will do curses and hexes, um, but they do it to seek justice. So they do it for the good of people, right? Um, they call upon spirits. They truly believe in yin and yang. So every wrongdoing, we have to do something right um, to keep the balance of the world. They believe in protecting and defending. Um, they and the religious ones that are Wiccans, they worship Hecate, Nyx, Loki, and Poseidon. We have the Elemental Witch next, which technically couldn't be broken down into each element. Um, they center their practice around the five elements earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. Now, again, like I said, they can focus on one of them or they can focus on all of them. Personally, I like all of them. Um, so I use all of them in my practice. So the ones that focus on earth, um, they might be interested in trees, crystals, animals. Um, the ones interested in air might do air magic, smudging, wind magic, not magic. The ones interested in fire would do candle magic and sun magic. Um, and those interested in water would do, um, would collect water. Um, and for those that do a little bit of everything, they might do wild crafting, gardening, and connecting with the elemental beings, as well as scrying. So we also have a ceremonial witch. So sometimes these are called religious witches, and they can be Hellenic, Christian, Satanic, Wiccan, Voodoo, the Lama, mm -hmm. Celtic Druid, Santeria, and Norse Pagan. Um, they usually belong in a coven or a group of witches. They perform powerful spell work that is, that is astrologically aligned and call upon deities related to the desired outcome. Now, personally for me, I am currently solitary. I am um, seeking into a coven today, actually. Um, so, you now hopefully I get in. But anyways, I do focus my magic personally um, according to astrological timing. So I am... Hoping to get into a coven to branch out on that. 
The hereditary witches are also known as ancestral witches. Their path was passed down from their ancestors or family members. They believe in folk magic. They use their ancestors' grimoires. And they usually focus on traditional spells and rituals. So usually it's the mom that's a witch. Um, sometimes it's a grandma. Um, but they pass their rituals as well as their grimoires down. Um, and they're really big about adding on to the bloodline so that they can continue this path. We next have the Dianic Witch, which Dianic is actually a type of um, Wiccan coven. Um, so Dianic Witches are only women. No men are allowed to be Dianic. Um, they worship the goddess Mother Maiden and Chrome, um, which usually is the goddess Diana. They are extremely feminist, so everything about them is about feminine energy. Um, they are all about fighting against the oppression of women. If you do not want to use a deity in your practice at all, you are considered a secular witch. Secular witches have no religion involved in their spell work. Now, this does not mean that they're atheists. Um, some of them are, of course. But you can still have a religion and be a secular witch. Um, these specifically just do not use their religion within their witchcraft practice. They make up their own rules whenever it comes to witchcraft, too. So they don't stick to the tradition they are fully, it's what I want to do when I want to do it. Um, so, yeah. Next we have the sex witch. Um, these obviously practice sex magic. Um, they also practice self-love. Um, I actually follow a group of witches that are sex witches. And their focus is on BDSM. And how it makes you feel powerful. Um, and they use that power in their witchcraft. They can manipulate. And it, it kind of goes with glamour as well, I would think. Um, but they can manifest orgasms. Like, it's crazy. I love it. <laughs> we have a healing witch as well. Um, they obviously focus on healing magic. Um, they can do Reiki. They do alternative medicine, um, as well as herbal remedies. So they create their own medicine. They usually focus on Eastern medicine, which is completely natural. It's not taking any pills, um, or any kind of Western culture medication. And the last type of witch that I'm going to talk about is the Shamana witch. So the Shamanas are female shamans. They are healers, they are herbalists, they are sorceresses, um, and they're mentors. They use a lot of drumming, dancing, um, and plants in their rituals. And they also know how to get into an altered consciousness. Um, and this is usually by eating um, plants that are hallucinogens. Um, no actual drugs. It's all completely natural. But it could be like mushrooms. Um, but they can also do it without. So, pretty cool. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are 32 different types of witches. Um, there are plenty more, I'm sure, but these are some of the main ones. Um, like I said, choose one area and focus on that one area. And when you feel more comfortable, you can branch out. Um, I do have all of this um, as a transcript on my blog. Um, that's lorenafreya.wordpress.com. L-O-R-E-N-A. F-R-E-Y.
yja.wordpress.com. Um, I also have on the blog post um, a bunch of resources. So I have um, books for each type of magic practice. Um, so this could be like over astrology, it could be over bone throwing, um, it could be over nocturnal witchcraft, I've got sea witchcraft in here, water magic, lunar rituals, herbalism, botany, all kinds of books in here, um, gardening even, um, do-it-yourself perfumes, all of it, everything I talked about, I've got a book for it. Um, they are all on Amazon, and the majority of them um, have the Kindle version where you can read it on your app. Or um, some of them even have audiobook versions. So definitely get, give that a check out. Um, if you haven't already, follow me on my socials. On Facebook, I am Journey Into Witchcraft Podcast. Um, I just opened up a private Facebook group as well. It's attached to my um, Facebook page. So definitely check that out, too, because I'll be posting some um, content that's not going to be anywhere else in there. Um, also, on Twitter, I'm at Lorena Freya. Same for Instagram, at Lorena Freya. And um, I have a Patreon as well. And that is Journey into Witchcraft. And my plans start as low as $5 a month. You have access to my entire grimoire. Um, so you have access to that. You get ceremonial um, group rituals that we will do. Um, we will be doing weekly movie nights. Um, and there are quite a few different perks. So definitely give that a check out if you're interested. Alright guys, have a great day.